No, this is not abuse. This is not a sick joke. And no, it's also not a new TikTok challenge. This is a celebratory event in honor of the person who's inside that big brown cloud of spies. In Denmark, we have this rather peculiar tradition when you turn 25 and you're not married, where the friends of the unfortunate soul will douse the victim in large quantities of cinnamon. And the same thing will happen when you turn 30, only at that point we upgrade to actually using pepper instead of cinnamon. No one knows exactly where this tradition originates from, but it seems likely that it is connected to the old spice traders of Denmark from the 16th century. They used to travel so much around that they never really got to settle down and find a wife, and that earned them the nickname of Peorsven, or literally Pepper Journeyman. The earliest documentation we have of the cinnamon tradition, however, is much younger and seems to be from the 60s. It is theorized that it's probably a group of friends who couldn't wait for the 30 shenanigans and decided to do something at 25 instead and then exchange the pepper with the cinnamon. No matter what, this tradition has now spread to the whole country and it is now customary in Denmark to be showered in cinnamon when you turn 25 since most people are not married at that point. Right, so what about that? How does that connect to this video? Mick's brother is turning 25 and he's not married. So we came to the conclusion that a cinnamon trap disguised as a present would be an absolute awesome idea and after some brainstorming we had a pretty rough plan ready on how we wanted to approach this. It's going to be a bit of a rock and roll design so let's just determine the essentials and then I'll figure out the rest as I go along. The main constraints I got for this project are 1. It has to be able to take and hold the air from a CO2 cartridge. 2. I have to be able to control how violently, at least to some degree, this air is released. 3. I have to be able to take tested using a compressor so I don't have to waste a lot of CO2 cartridges unnecessarily. Four, the contraption must be able to release the air based on some kind of sensor signal. Five, I must be able to blow cinnamon up in the air, obviously, otherwise there's absolutely no point to this. Six, it has to be a contained unit so I can disguise it as a present. Right, with these in mind, let's have a look at the pressure side of this system because it does take some more consideration. I decided to use a separate pressure vessel as it solves several of these constraints already. First of all, I will be able to test it using a compressor since I can just pressurize the pressure vessel itself. Uh, but also, I will be able to install an overpressure valve and First of all, that's a safety feature, so I don't overpressurize the system, obviously, but also I can adjust the max pressure of the system and by that actually control how violently it will blow a cinnamon into the air. It will mean that the system will be bigger and heavier than it probably could have been, but I've decided to just accept that trade-off and no matter what, this is what I'll go with. Um, to be able to take the CO2 cartridge, I have to re able to reliably puncture it and release the air in a controlled way. My friend Tim suggested that I used a spare part from Hardball called a piercing nozzle to interface with the cartridge. And then I just had to figure out a way to build that piercing nozzle into my system. So I need to figure out how much air I actually got available in one of these cartridges. And since this is a 12 gram cartridge, it means I got 12 grams of CO2 in here. I need to accommodate for in my pressure vessel. I've looked around and generally I shouldn't go above 10 bars in my pressure vessel if I want to keep my components standard and cheap. <laughs> so that means I can use the ideal gas law and the molar weight of CO2 to determine that I need in the order of 0 0.6, 0 0.7 liters of volume in my pressure vessel to keep all of the air in here at 10 bars. If I then use one and a half inch piping to create this volume, that means I'll need around half a meter of piping. So now I've got a controllable overpressure valve rated to 10 bars and about half a meter of piping, but I still need a few more valves to get this whole thing to work. First of all, when I blow air into this system, I need to make sure it just doesn't escape the same way it came in. So by installing something called a check valve, or basically the same thing you got in a bicycle hose, uh, I would be able to 
prevent that from happening since it has a spring and a small plate inside that will close up when the air tries to go the wrong direction. And last but not least, I need a solenoid valve to release the gas when the present is open and the sensors are activated along with a bunch of fittings and Teflon tape to assemble the whole thing. So with the pressure right side of the system now roughly in place, I can have a look at the electronics for this thing. Obviously I need a battery supply in order to make this a contained unit and I still got the AA battery holder I ditched for my last project when I made a cable cam. Uh, anyway, that'll give me around 6 volts, but I need 24 volts to activate my valve. So I'll have to install a DC-DC step-up converter in order to supply these 24 volts, along with a relay that I'll activate with an Arduino Nano. Uh, for the sensors, I got a couple of photoresistors lying around, and I guess that should work to register when the present is open and light comes in. Uh, I also need some kind of way to arm and disarm this whole thing or be rather hard to load it up with cinnamon without getting it all blown up in my own face. So some kind of panel with controls, LEDs to indicate the status of this trap is probably a good idea. Anyway, this is the rough plan, this is the rough design. So now it's all about just printing it, fabricating, building it and designing the whole thing and all the structural components as I go along. This turned out to be a little bit more than I expected, but due to my rock and roll design, I had no clue when I started out. And as I started thinking about it, I needed this component, this component, this component, this component, and all of these components. Before I can start building, I will put out the base plate. And I'll start putting the things in the base plate to check out where to put my mounting holes because, well, since I don't have a 3D model, I'm not completely sure I don't have any interference between the mounting holes of the different components. Hopefully I thought of everything, but I still need some components, so I'm still modeling, I'm still 3D printing uh, because my jigsaw skills are not that good. So I'll use 3D print to cover my fuck ups up. <laughs> so while all this is going, uh, I'll start putting this up and well, let's make this cinnamon present. <laughs> Furnace is in here. I haven't tested it. The time to figure out whether I'm gonna release Magic Blue Smoke is pretty much now. So I hooked up my power supply. Three, two, one. No smoke. Let's program it up. <laughs> Let's get this working. And bam, programming is done. And it's all working. I only have one thing that became a little bit of an issue and that was whenever I turn on and off the valve here I actually activate and deactivate a solenoid and especially when I deactivate it I get a big voltage spike going back into my system. The fix is quite easy, it's just a diode, something called a flyback diode. I used a 1N4007 diode. The whole thing is controlled via this panel down here and of course the two sensors sitting here and over here. You turn it on, this LED will light up and over here there is a manual release buttons. Let's activate the sensors. This one will light up. The sensors are now active. If I remove only one, nothing will happen. When I remove this one, after one and a half second, the click will come. After five more seconds, it will deactivate again. And that's it. Let's try it out. 
when I pull this, we should release the pressure that's in these, this vessel. Yes. Let's try it again. More pressure. Pressurize. <laughs> this is fucking stupid. <laughs> oh, I love it. Perfect. Hmm, not the way I wanted it to go. It's because of the valve. It only has a one millimeter orifice. Oh, God damn it. So I went ahead and looked at it and this valve in the contraption here is way too small. The KV value of it is, what was it, 0.09? This one has a K value which is 0.7, I think. So hopefully this should be okay now. So, it requires a few alterations. Uh, we need to put in some kind of clamp because there's no way to mount it. I'm thinking something like this. Big question here is the current. Hopefully everything here will be able to handle it. I don't know. <laughs> we haven't tried with the batteries. I'm a bit concerned. Yeah, doesn't worry. I think we have to switch the RC one out. With this one. This contains eight AA batteries. Let's try this out. I put flour in it. This is my first test. Let's see. Fuck. Well, I figured out, as you probably saw that, this is leaking. I'm going through all my joints with soapy water. And if there's any word bubbles, it's a leak. Teflon tape off and new teflon tape on at least i've learned i need to use like three times as much teflon tape as i thought i had to okay let's test it again i fixed up all the leaks and now hopefully everything will work i've taken down the compressor here i have flour and some mushed up chalk to test with so let's have some fun with a little test sequence and then we should be good to go <laughs> Maybe this, let's try that. Three, two, one. Wait. <laughs> I guess it worked. <laughs> <laughs> so let's have some fun with this now. We'll activate the sensors, then it should be two seconds. <laughs> sensors are working, manual release is working. And it does fire it up and it does hit my face. This should be ready to go. Three, two, one. I guess all we need to do now is check that the uh, CO2 cartridges will also work in here. So that's the last thing. Yes. Oops. Okay, activated. All right, it works. So I'll have the GoPro on. I'll turn it on. I'll Close the lids. Yes. And then, then I'll arm it. Yes. And then I'll give it. Remember to the cinnamon. Remember. <laughs> <laughs> or else it's just going to be a really, really, really bad prank.
Mika's off, Timmy is turning 25 and hopefully everything will work. He'll get cinema and straight in his face when he opens that box. God, I hope it works. I just saw the footage of Timmy getting the present and I declare this a huge success. I'm very thrilled that it actually ended up working despite shitty switches and troubles and everything else. But take a look at the aftermath here. There's cinnamon absolutely everywhere. <laughs> I hope I can clean it up. I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope that I will see you in the next video. Bye.